I can't hear you. Okay, good good deal. Okay, everybody, I told you we'd uh, we tried to get a hold of Mark Sargent about uh, 1.30, and here we are. It's 10.30 his time. Uh, Mark, I did go and uh, check out, and there is some, Lord, big news as far as the flat earth and the basketball. Uh, oh, yeah. Basketball guy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. It was. It's been a. It's been a busy, busy last thirty days. Uh, let's put it this way. I. I have. I have put up a lot of content over the last thirty days. So do you want me? Do you want me to kind of go into what's been happening? Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let's see. I'm getting uh, feedback. Sounds like everything is coming in. Okay. Okay. I was just looking at my controls. Yeah. Yeah. Go into it a little bit. Okay. So let me, in fact, let me click on the link just to make sure I got the the um, the date right. And that is, yeah. So around just about a month ago, uh, from from now, uh, just recently, what happened was a basketball player for the national for the NBA, Kyrie Irving, out of the World Championship Cleveland Cavaliers. He came out on a podcast just before All-Star Weekend. And what happened was he was flying to New Orleans for the All-Star Weekend. And during a podcast where he was being interviewed on the plane by his friend Richard Jefferson, he came out and basically said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally into Flat Earth. I totally buy it. I didn't really go into too much in the details, but, but that he believed it. And... You can imagine landing on the ground to the media firestorm because all media people, any any good reporter, you know, they're they're just tired of athletes giving boring interviews. Athletes notoriously give really really dry interviews. They all say the same thing, you know, give it 110 percent. The team really did real good, and the other team had a great coach. Blah blah blah. We've all heard this. So when the world championship star point guard comes out and says, "Oh yeah, I believe in flat Earth." it's going to raise more than a few eyebrows. So he hits the ground and gets, because they have a press day, they have a media day where they have to sit down at their own booths, just him in his booth and talk about this. And they grilled him on it and he didn't back down, which was, which was fantastic. And every major media outlet covered it at some point with the exception of mainstream television. So the big networks like NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, and CNN, they didn't run a television story on it, but everybody ran an internet story on it. And, and ESPN, the big sports network, just about every one of their daily and weekly shows covered it. So I'm just looking and I was, so I'm, I was just grabbing video as fast as I could and putting it up online and it was amazing the amount of content that was up there. So Draymond Green for the Golden State Warriors, another all-star, he was kind of into it. I've got a video clip of LeBron James asking Kyrie about Flat Earth, which is amazing. CNN ran an article called Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, and Why a Flat Earth is Okay. Then science started, and, and I'm just reading kind of in order the videos that came out that I that I was just pumping out there. So Bill Nye, the science guy, you've probably heard of him. He comes out, the Sports Illustrated grabbed him, wanted to talk about it. Sports Nation ran a story on it. The Jump a television show ran on it. First Take, these are all ESPN shows. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, 120 Sports, they went after him. Then a wrestler came out in defense of it. His name was AJ Styles, popular guy in the, in the WWE. He came out for it. TMZ. The, the famous tabloid news media outlet, they grabbed Neil deGrasse Tyson after what appeared to be a whole bunch of marijuana, and he came out again. <laughs> he came well, out wait, wait, wait. Now, now, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who arguably knows as much about physics as Mike Tyson, he jumps in, you know, always <laughs> in the limelight. Yeah. Uh, what 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 did he 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 basically said he was uh, just being a comic, didn't he? Or something yeah, like yeah. He was he was. It's it's strange because he can't. I have a firm belief that he cannot address it directly the way he should. So yeah, he's trying to be comic relief. So he's saying that Kyrie should really stick to bat. You know the cliche line: stick to basketball stay away from science and NASA and it's like, okay, because Neil has, yeah, Neil has a PhD in astrophysics. Sure. But he's never debated anybody. 
he I don't know what he publishes. He runs he runs a planetarium, but basically he is the front man for all science. So when you want to talk about anything science related, he's the guy you put in front of the camera because I, I will give him this. He is very good at group presentations, group speaking. Mm -hmm. He is a cross he's like between a PR guy. Oh, what? Yeah, he's a PR guy. He's he's good on camera and, and, and the acting credits that he has to his name are are, are substantial at this point. And I, I, I'm not being racist when I say this, but he, for me, every time I watch him on stage, he reminds me of a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad. That's that's what he comes across at. You know, he's that's, got he's got that sort of, that that's, delivery that's, style. He's got that uh, homey kind of. Well, you know, <clears throat> that's that's why they said that um, uh, the the role of the Fonz they they put picked Winkler over Stallone because they said Winkler was the kind of guy you you would want in your home. Yeah. You know that you would you would want to watch on television because yep. he's just. You know, same kind of thing. Neil deGrasse Tyson is very, very. That's very good. He's very comfortable. He could wear a Cosby sweater, and mm -hmm. he could he could really basically speak on just about anything. He could do he could do comedy if he wanted to. If he if he had somebody writing for him. Well, he he kind of is. Yeah. He kind of is. Uh, yeah. So he came out against it. At, you know, not a big shock, but. It took them a, a few days before they they got him. It, this thing got a lot of traction. I mean, you can imagine the the, he, you know, the world championship. You know, the current world champions in the middle of their season, just before All Star break, and your star guard comes out and and does this, and it's it was incredible. He did not do a lot of follow up interviews. In fact, the only person that he did a follow up interview with was his friend and teammate Richard Jefferson. And they, he did a. I'm just going again. I'm going through the uh, the shows that covered. This was uh, the podcast he was on. Yeah, it was a podcast called Road Trippin', and that was the the. It was done again by his friend Richard Jefferson. They usually do it on the plane, and it sh sh shouldn't have surprised me, but it did, and I missed it. Which was that certain athletes are more prone to get into the conspiracy world than others. The NFL, of course, they've only got, what, seven road games a, a year, maybe, uh, playoffs, maybe eight. Uh, and But when it comes to basketball and baseball, they have a lot of road games, a lot of road games. So they're on the planes a lot, and he went down those rabbit holes that are on YouTube. They're, they're not hard to find, and he got into Flat Earth. And you could tell he, he, was, he was quoting the stuff. He, he'd done, done his homework. He had done some of the research, and, and he was in. And he touched more people in a weekend than the entire Flat Earth community has done in the last six months. It was, yeah, that's, he's got, that's, that's he, a good thing about it. he's got what, four, four and a half million Twitter followers alone. That's just Twitter. You know, there's a lot of people that, that you know, younger people, especially that listen to this guy. You know, if you're a, if you're a champion athlete, Pete, you, you do influence people. And there was a guy, a reporter from USA Today, I believe, that was giving him crap at the All Star Game, all the media day. Basically, he he didn't want to say it. He didn't want to be so rude, but he was basically saying, "Look, you have a responsibility. When you reach this certain level, you're not supposed to talk crap." That's what he was basically saying. And mm -hmm. Kyrie's response you're misleading is misleading the youth. The what? You, you're misleading the the youth. Exactly. You know, you, Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're Why not are you a good role about, model. You should only talk about what's on the script, the mandated topics. You are not supposed to talk about chemtrails and 9/11 and Boston bombing and San Diego. There are thir there are things there are no go topics, and flat Earth shouldn't be one of those no go topics because it's so ridiculous that, that it shouldn't even be a, a concept. But he did, and he stuck to his guns. And so, in fact, I'm going through more of the videos that I released. Uh, let's see if there's anything. Oh, yeah, rapper B.O.B., he came back out, came out of hiding, did his first interview ever. Didn't do very well on Hot 97 FM. They have like a million followers on YouTube, and, and he just did not. He could have done a lot better, let's put it this way. Howard Stern, somebody brought it up on his show. He addressed it. And then recently, I'll go into a couple uh, – couple things one one was that he came out on a podcast at uh, um, Kyrie Irving and talked about he, he basically did not back down and the news media are quick to say that he's doubling down on it which mm. he is he's, he's not backing down from this why would he 
it's it's in fact it's a great challenge because if you get the attention if people like Bill Nye even though Bill Nye has nothing to do with anything Bill Nye the science guy literally all he has is a bachelor's in mechanical engineering not knocking mechanical engineers but a guy with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering shouldn't be on climate change panels he shouldn't be on astronomy and astrophysics panels he nobody should be asking him anything about meteorology and yet the media is notoriously lazy about finding people that are good on camera. It's like, well, he's good on camera. Let's just bring him on and ask him about something. Just pick a topic. And people will accept his word as more of an educated opinion. It's like, no, no. If you want to ask him about mechanical engineering, even that's limited. He became an actor almost immediately after getting his degree. He, he was a, a small-time actor in, in Seattle, Washington. Never actually. Well, yeah, he did some stuff in Hollywood for Disney. But – just because you talk to kids about science, I could talk to kids about science. That doesn't mean I'm gonna I'm gonna label myself as the science guy. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't doesn't really matter. So no. he so Kyrie doubles doubles down, and then another guy comes out just recently. This all happened in the last week or two, which was a, a martial arts guy named, and I'm I'm not selling him short by saying martial arts. It's just a limited that. So if I say jujitsu, people don't mistake it. Say, well, he knows taekwondo or karate or. Mm-hmm. whatever it is he he came out on the alex jones show Infowars, and was going into the flat earth thing and and the reason you say why, why are you bringing him up the reason why i bring him up is that one of the people from our community eric dubay he is going to be on his show tomorrow night on eddie bravo's show and he's got quite a quite a following eddie bravo is a big he's a longtime friend and sometimes co-host of Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan, even though Joe Rogan's officially said he's never going to do a Flat Earth show and he hates Flat Earth because he has to. This Joe Rogan was the guy, the the only conspiracy guy I've ever known that was was a conspiracy guy and he was really specialized in going after the moon landings, that the moon landings were faked. And then all of a sudden he goes dark, he comes back, sci-fi gives him his own show, and in his very first ep- – called, it was called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And in the very first episode, he comes out and recants every bad thing he ever said about NASA and that they're mm-hmm. completely legit. <laughs> it's like, seriously, man? Mm-hmm. No one's ever done that, I think, in the history. Had, had $100 bills sticking out of – Well, every maybe not. Mm-hmm. The, maybe they could have offered them the carrot, but he, they probably threatened him with the stick more. Which is, yeah. like, you know, we'll, yeah. but, but I mean, yeah, look what they gave him. They, it's like, okay, here, we'll give you a one year contract for on the Sci Fi Network. You have to get the ratings for it to get picked up again for a second season, and it wasn't. And, but in that first episode, you have to recant everything you said, basically destroying his credibility at that point from, from both sides. Uh, nobody's. Mark, I wanted to switch gears here just a second and see if you can, can help me with this. I have just, uh, prior to calling, he played the um, a little clip, which went into some um, early 1900s experiments. Uh, let's see, Motley and Nicholson. Oh, uh, uh, Ma- you know uh, what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, the Michelson Eaker? Morley. Yeah, Marcus Morley. Yeah. And uh probably Aries Fan. One by Stagnet, which proved there was an ether and then, you know, uh, so, Einstein came along and just the whole idea of ether said, Oh, there's nothing to it which yeah, you know, that uh that was really shaking up things at that time and uh it, it uh and I had not really heard about that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it's interesting because mainstream science will bring up those two experiments. Well, the the two experiments that I that I love that they reference one is Michelson Morley, and the other mm-hmm. is Aries failure. And I won't go into the... it was a failure because he was trying to prove that the Earth moved. That's some reason. Well, that's failed. just it. It it was really interesting, and I I won't go into the experiments in great detail because it'll just confuse people. But what they were trying to do was back back way back when, uh, not well not that far back, but far enough. They were trying to prove that everyone thought that there was sort of like this solar. It wasn't like a solar wind. It was like an ether wind, ether, like an like yeah. an like an energy wind that that the, the 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 world moved through. And they were trying to prove this one way or another. And both of them came up with the same results, which was 
hang on, I gotta hang up this call. Not your call. So they came up with, I'll use the Aries result, which was they both proved that, that they couldn't find the wind. They, 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 they came to the occlusion. It's like, well, the wind cannot be there. There cannot be this, this ether, this moving, this ether that w the world is moving through. But I thought the quote from, from Aerie was more to the point, which was, okay, either I failed or the earth isn't moving through space. Right. And that was very, very interesting because, again, it was a huge assumption because even for him, you know, a scientist, not that long ago, said, everyone knew the Earth was moving through space. And I'd like to segue that into something because it, it's, a, it's a clue that I'm, I'm going to be putting together. It's not is – that is that alarm on your side? Mm-mm. Oh, no. That's a fire, fire truck rolling through somewhere around here. Oh, just yeah, I just went down the street. Sorry, <laughs> must have been my ride. Anyway, so <laughs> what the the segue I wanted to get into was how do we? Here's here's the premise. Everybody knows if you ask a hundred people on the street right now how they know the Earth is a uh, a ball moving through space and all this other fun stuff. Sooner or later, you know, of course, forget about the knee jerk reactions about we know right right now. Eventually, they're going to lean on a space program like NASA, right? Everyone's, everyone's going to eventually say the same thing. It's like, well, NASA showed those pictures. They're the European Space Agency or JAXA or mm -hmm. Russians, right? And, and I will come back eventually and say, all right, that's fine. You, you want to use the NASA images, that, that's great. But it's not like we didn't know before NASA that it was a globe. Because the first picture that was ever released from... NASA that the earth was a globe fully lit in sunlight the very first picture that was ever released was in 1972 from Apollo 17 how did we know before then because it's not like we woke up one day in 1972 and and there's the picture oh well, well, well oh, yeah. thank, thank god we wiped our brows it's like well good thing it's a globe right how did we know before 1972? And, then, and you could you could argue and say, well, no, it happened and started in the 60s and NASA, blah, blah, blah. You know, and if I, I'll, I'll go fine. I'll give you I'll, I'll throw you all the way back to 1958, which is not that much earlier. How did you know when that was when NASA was founded? How did you know before 1958 that the Earth was a globe? And I say globe because people will say, well, it's round or a circle. It's like, no, no, a dinner plate is round. A dinner plate is a circle. That doesn't mean a dinner plate is a ball. You can only use three words, ball, sphere, or globe, right? How did we know before then that it was, uh, it was, one, uh, that it was a globe? And they're going to look at you funny. Anybody that you ask, and they're going to say, well, and, and, and their wheels are going to start spinning. And they're going to say, well, science told us. And that, that's what I was hoping you know, their answer would be. It's like, okay, science told you. That's, that's my point. My point is when it comes to anything else in this world, uh, you know, th we can test it. We can see it for ourselves. Even the small things. Fire burns. We can test that. Water is wet. Definitely test that. Drop something, it falls to the floor. We can test this all day long. No, to date, I don't think anyone's dropped something and it hasn't fallen to the floor. All right, down here. These are things we can test. When it comes to how you know the world is a globe, that is something you are told. And again, let's take NASA out of the equation. Before NASA, how did you know it was a globe? And the answer is always the same, always the same. Well, science told us, mainstream science told us it was a globe. And then I come back and I say, well, how did they know? Because, and, and I'm stealing from the Matt Boylan rant, which was until you get high enough, to where the, the, the globe starts falling away from you and you can see it's a globe until you can get high enough. What do you really know? I mean, yeah, you could be nice. You could use all the math and trig trigonometry and geometry all you want. And you can be 99.9999% sure. But until you go up there, you don't know for sure. And you say, well, if they're 99.99% sure, that's, a, that's pretty much a, a done deal. I'm going, really? Because they're 99.999% sure of exactly what we have underneath our feet, meaning the, the core of the earth. If you believe how big the earth is, if you, if you dug a hole, if you believe mainstream science, if you dug a hole right now, 4,000 miles down, you would reach the center of the earth. And they will describe every level going all the way down to that 4,000 mile point. But when, and, when, and you look in the science books, you could see all the cross sections of the world. 
but the deepest hole ever drilled, ever, to date, even right now, is eight miles. Not a thousand miles, not a hundred miles, not ten miles, eight miles. So and that took several years to do. Yeah, it took, it took a long time. In fact, when they got down to eight miles, the Russians tried for the, another decade to get past it. They could not do it. So, but they, in the science books, they will tell you exactly what's in the center of the earth. And, and I come back and say, well, how do you know this? You don't know. In fact, wiki, the science will backpedal in certain wiki entries and say, well, we extrapolate, we expand, we, we take educated guesses. I go, but you don't know. So why don't you just leave it as a question mark? Science will not do that. If you don't, well, if you didn't know the earth was a globe, why were you telling people it was a globe for hundreds of years? And furthermore... If you got up high enough to take the picture, here's where it gets weird. If you got high enough to take the picture and it wasn't a globe, would you tell the general public? Would you tell it? The, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a new analogy and my, the latest one is the Truman Show, the mayor. So everyone knows the Truman Show. Truman gets out to the edge. He, he finds the, you know, the, that he's in a building. Then he finds the stairs and, and the door. He leaves almost immediately, right? And that's because, well, Truman had nothing to lose. His wife was fake. The town was fake. Everything was fake. The only person in the, in the entire Truman Show that was real was him. But what if the whole town was being fooled, right? And let's say it wasn't Truman in that rowboat let's, or in the sailboat. Let's say it was the mayor and he gets out there. Does the mayor take the door and get out? Because he's the mayor. He's got power. He's got influence. He's got a family. He, he, he runs a, a whole city. Does he leave? Or does he come back? And when he comes back, does he tell anybody? And that's just the, that's just the mayor. That, you know, he doesn't have nearly as much as lose as, say, mainstream science. Let's say it was a scientist working in the town. Would a scientist tell anybody? It gets well, it, it gets pretty weird at that point. Anyway, it does, and and as we have talked about in the past, if you uh, subscribe to a simulation theory, if if that, uh, even though I don't have any problem with it, it, it sure would shake some people up. And speaking of math, you know that was one of the things that that uh, scientists always believed that light had to have some medium to travel through. And that's what they they said the ether was, one of the things they said it was. And just like where you can't have a wave on the ocean without water, yep. you can't have this this stream of protons that uh, even Einstein agreed traveled in a wave without some type of, of, of medium. But here's where, and this isn't a perfect example. I think it's a relatively good example. If you have two beakers of water, uh, they're both 100 milliliter containers. Each has 50 milliliters in, and you label one as half full and one as half empty. They're both equal. Now, if you take straight math and multiply one side by two and the other side by two, they should be equal. But when you do that, of course, you get one beaker that is completely empty and one that is completely filled, even though on the math side, the math checks out. So a lot of these things that are just proven mathematically that don't lend themselves to uh, experimental thing do so because they're not true. Yeah. And that's my contention. No, no, no. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Nikola Tesla had a wonderful quote, which, which was dug up recently, where he was saying that mainstream science basically is just a tower of equations built on top of each other. Mm -hmm. To where, and everyone that makes a, a, a theory that, that goes on top of, you know, the next building block up, they never check the core theory. They always just assume that everything up until that point is correct. And he goes, by the time you get up to a certain height, he goes, the equations are meaningless. They, because they're no, nobody's verifying anything. It's just, it's just numbers. It just, it's nonsense. And, and I mentioned that because people say, well, are you, you're saying you're smarter than Einstein or Stephen Hawking or, or Tesla or all this. I'm going, no, no, not at all. What I'm saying is, is that if the core equations, if the foundation of what you're building on is flawed, everything above it is flawed. It's no different than a house. Look, if the foundation is shot, then you, you can't trust anything that's, that's going to be built on top of it. And uh, one more thing, which was, you know, when it comes to mainstream science, and I'm not, I'm not condemning science. A lot of people say, well, no, you're attacking science. No, 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 I'm not. I mean, science has made us some wonderful conveniences. The light bulb, fantastic. Air conditioning, super great. Uh, microwave ovens, 
yeah, for the most part, helps people. It saves a whole bunch of time. But when it comes to other things, they take leap of faiths like anybody else. Uh, I like to call science magic without mystery because that's all it really is. It's magic until science can repeat it over and over again. Then they lay claim to it and say that it's theirs, that it's that it's science now. You know, water boils at a certain temperature. You can repeat this over and over at certain altitudes. And it's like, oh, well, science, it's now in the science books. Once science can repeat an act of magic, it's its considered science. What's interesting, though, is there's stuff we're dealing with nowadays, like the double slit experiment, which I still think is magic. And you, you, oh, you know, yeah. the double slit experiment is, is, is so far out there, and it just it blows me away that science can look at this and say, oh, well, it's science now. It's repeatable, therefore it's science. Like, like, dude, you have no idea what's happening with a double slit experiment. And for people that don't know what I'm talking about here, it means it's the it's the question that we were all asked as children. I don't know why we were all asked this as children, which is if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And we now know the answer to this, which is it may not make a sound because if a human being isn't there to witness it, the tree isn't there. Meaning the right, tree and, does not exist. Right, it, it doesn't make a sound because it's not there. It's not. It hasn't been built yet, and we do this in. And you know that better than anybody else. Being a, a you know, making video. Oh yeah, yeah. Video the video game. Stuff, the video I mean, game that, world is based on this premise. It's called conservation of resources of game resources, which is look if there isn't a character in a part of the game to interact with that part. Let's say they're in a the forest, right? If there isn't a character there. You don't draw the forest. You don't render the forest because it's a waste of resources. Why would you render the forest? There's nobody there to see it. And so people go, well, there's squirrels and rabbits. And so it's like, they don't count unless a person, that's what the double split slit experiment says. The slit experiment says that matter reacts differently if a person is looking at it. If they're not looking at it, it reacts very generally. It, it's, 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 it's in a state of potential, meaning... It just hasn't been, it's not there yet. Until a person's looking at it, it doesn't have, it, it, people say, well, it's like it's, it has consciousness. It's like, no, it has nothing to do with consciousness. It has to do with, with, with how this world was built. And I'm not saying, I mean, a simulated reality, matrix tech thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to delve into it too much, but I will say that God was a programmer. It, we, and we can, I can say that confidently now because all, everyone knows that God has tools, and up until now, people say, well, God has a divine hammer and chisel and, and compass and square and all this other fun stuff. You know, they, 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 they take divine and they just slap it onto whatever tools of the day that are out there. But when you look at this world, it appears that there's coding involved. And, yeah, but uh, error correcting coding. The what? No less. Error correcting coding, no less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 very efficient coding on top of it. You know, say, well, no, you know, you're saying that God's lazy. I'm going, no, I'm not saying God's lazy. I'm saying God is very efficient. You don't have to build the resources. In fact, I was just thinking about this morning uh, when I was in the shower, which was, people will say, well, th why why isn't there space? You know, what you're you're saying that there is no space. I'm going, look, if the illusion works, if you're in a planetarium, if people believe in space. And here's the difference between everything I've said before and now is that your imagination will fill in the gaps. Your imagination will take you to space anyway. All you have to do is say there's space and the human mind will create all sorts of fun space scenarios. And it's same thing with underground. All you have to do is say, oh, there's these vast underground systems and people's, people's imagination will go there. The human mind is a fantastic in that regards. We are extremely creative. When it comes to that, and you're saying, okay, what's your point? My point is, if the illusion works for 99.999% of the people, that's what you go with because that's the most efficient way. If you can create a planetarium and most of the civilization buys it, meaning you're living in a planetarium right now, if, mo if you buy it, then that's what you go with. And th that saves so many resources. You don't have to build a giant solar system with all this empty space. Carl Sagan was the first person to say this, I think. He's going, he goes... That it seems like a massive waste of space if there isn't anything else out there, meaning like intelligent life. But even then, he was saying it's a massive waste of space anyway. That the solar system is laid out with these huge distances that it can never be crossed, especially by us. 
And it's to give you that, that sense of wonderment, that sense of the grand cosmos. But you don't actually have to build it. All you have to do is, is create the, the illusion of it. And, and not, not to ramble on about one more thing, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a down-to-earth version of this. And that is, if you've ever been to, and I don't know if they have it at Disney World, but I know they have it at Disneyland, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You go to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and at the very end of that ride is this giant room where you're, it's the illusion that you're going through this harbor in the Caribbean at night in the 1700s, and there's pirate ships in the distance and a moon and horizon. And here's the thing. You don't know. Go into that ride. You don't know how far away that horizon is or that boat or the, that moon. It's, it's because we believe the illusion. You couldn't, I couldn't tell you right now how far away it is. I, it may be 100 yards away. It may be 100 feet away. It could be a mile away. Of course, it's not that big. But the point is, is that we can do that with paint and light and wood. We can do that now. A little water. Imagine what you could do with an advanced technology. Imagine the, 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 the experience that you could do. We are susceptible, susceptible to illusion. We were designed that way. You think I'm kidding? You probably know somebody right now, or you may be somebody right now, who can't watch a television show of a roller coaster in first person because you might get ill. Right. You, know, you might get motion sickness just by watching that. How is that even possible? Uh, why, or, or the um, suspension of disbelief when you go to the movies. Uh, why do you cry at the movies? You know you're at a movie. You're sitting right next to somebody. You're eating popcorn. The actor uh, up on the, on the screen, you've seen them in different things. You know, you know there are millions of people that are, that are, that are, that are watching this in, in other places and there are hundreds of thousands that were in the production. Why are you crying about uh, the, uh, with, with what, uh, what's happening on the screen? And that is because the suspension of disbelief. Your mind is designed to disregard reality temporarily to where you are immersed in it, which is why people get angry at bad movies because you're not buying it. It's the good movies that we buy into and, and we get emotionally involved, whether, you know, we laugh or we cry or we do whatever. Anyway, sorry. I, 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 had a, I had a conversation yesterday, and I think this is, this is part of the problem. Uh, sometimes we don't distinguish between education and, and intelligence. Right. And there's many, many educated people who aren't particularly intelligent and they're really at a disadvantage so i think the higher you go in our educational system the more indoctrinated you are to the norms and you know of, of what society is supposed to be yeah. uh had an interesting discussion with a very educated man and uh about flat earth and just talking about the, the old eight inch drop per mile squared and you know, how if this was true, then you couldn't see this and these type of things. And he said, uh, I said, you see what I'm saying? He said, yeah, but it's wrong. I said, no, it's, wrong. <laughs> he said, it's just wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong. You're yeah. wrong. Yeah. And I said, well, why is it wrong? You, you just are. And that's all he could come back with. Yeah, yeah. The There was an interesting article that I read recently on, and I, I did a YouTube video on it. And it was written by a professor of physics. First time I've seen this since we've started this thing. A professor of physics and astronomy out of Indiana. And he posted uh, it, some transcripts of a chat log between he and several of his former students. Or at least one of his former students. I, they were both students, though. And he was getting to this argument. They were flat earthers. And he could not come up with any yeah it was the programming it was if yeah if you something i had said a long time ago which was if you're an astronomer or an astrophysicist or you're, you're done there's nothing i can do for you because there's there's too much conditioning and they got to a point where they were grilling them about the van allen radiation belts you know the the, the deadly radiation belts announced in 1959 by nasa we supposedly can't go through them they say okay how did we get through them and he went into this tech you could tell he was cutting and pasting from different things where he was just using as much textbook answers as he could. Well, it comes down to how long they were there and the speed they were traveling and the atmospheric conditions and the type of shielding. And they were going, how did they get past it? And he couldn't answer it. You know, he was, he was basically doing a long-winded version of, well, there has to be a logical explanation. 
Mm -hmm. And 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 they they came back. It's like, whoa, 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 what what is that logical explanation? And they go, well, there has to be a logical explanation. You, you've heard we've heard this in television shows and movies, and there has to be. And it's like just because you say it multiple times doesn't mean there is a logical explanation. It means either you have one which you don't, or it never happened. They never went, and that's where he doesn't want to go because everything starts to break down from there. And that's, again, it's why science will lose. Science is losing, has been losing since we started this thing, which is they have a very limited number of tools they can bring to bear against this, against this concept that we are living in a, a planetarium, terrarium, Truman Show type, type structure, which is they built the rules. They were the ones that set up the, the, the game rules, the, the, the construct. They were the ones that, that said, okay, here's what physics are regarding our world. And they can't go outside of that. Whereas Flat Earth, the we're coming at it from all sorts of different angles, new angles every couple months. And they've never even heard of. And they only have, again, they only have the same, what is it, a dozen, 15 different things they can throw at it. And some do not work very well. And so he, he was dying. And in fact, he titled the article how I tried to, what was it, some a debate, flat earthers, just something, something. But he was basically saying that he was trying to convince them that it was round and he failed. And he was saying in a roundabout way, well, because they were ignorant. But his arguments were horrible. They were, they were cliche and th no, not really surprising. But yeah, science, what you were saying, anybody that has a master's de or degree in higher uh, masters or higher degree in any of the physical sciences i don't care what it is biology hydrology geology anthropology take your pick any of those guys are going to be really really hard pressed to come around because their world it would crumble you're asking well, yeah, that their livelihood depends on <laughs> this house of cards they have they have built upon it. right i mean the, uh, the think of think of the amount of money they spent on their education I know. And, you know, they idea. they will they will end up crawling into a a, a, a nice bottle of scotch, and yeah. not coming out because the, there's nothing they can do. You're you're asking them to to hit the reset button on their life. That's that's like like investing all your life savings in a buggy buggy whip factory or something. <laughs> nice. Um, let me ask you this. I was listening to a video recently, and I'm sure you you you've talked about this. Uh, but this particular person who sounded spot on on everything he said uh, basically said that nobody or no country or no entity or whatever had circ circumnavigated Antarctica in a um, with a mileage that would be consistent with what Antarctica is supposed to be. Right. Right. In fact, we're, I'm still, that's, that is the test. I put this out to several people. If you want to try to prove the globe, the easiest way to do it, and I don't know how you're going to pull it off now with, because the treaty is going to limit you any, it's going to restrict your access to the Antarctic coastline is take one boat and one plane. If you think of the flat earth as a, as a giant clock face, you will just put the boat and the plane, both at the six o'clock position, right down at the bottom. And the boat doesn't have to do anything. Boat can just sit there, not burn a, an ounce of gas, and just sit there. Within, you know, it's got to be within somewhat visual range of the uh, the Antarctic coastline. And then you have the plane either fly clockwise or counterclockwise, and see if it can get around the entire coastline of Antarctica without refueling. Because if the plane, if if you believe what the mainstream uh, reports say. And you can look this on, on Google Earth if you want. It looks, Antarctica is approximately the same size as, as Australia, roughly, right? It's like an island continent. But in the flat model, it's very, very large. It's, it's a huge, massive coastline. And you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to get around it, even in, a, in the, the most heavily fueled plane. I don't think you could pull it off. So... That's the test we've been we're, we're kind of waiting for, and, and nobody's done it to date. I, I don't know when the, or if it could even be possible. Well, this this uh, this guy cited several expeditions, and he said that when they tried to do it, it they literally ran into years and and like thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. Yeah. Uh, to be able to do it. 
Yeah, so yeah. If you're gonna, them. yeah, that you could try to do it by ships. You could also take two ships and have them one one go one way, one go the other way, and they should meet at a certain amount of a certain rate at the at at the midway point. But yeah, yeah, I've heard I've heard the same thing, and of course that would be one of the big secrets you want to keep. Which is why yeah. the, the 1959 Antarctic Treaty. That's why you put it. Part of the reason why you put it in place. You don't want people going. You, it's okay for people to go down there. You just don't want them spending a whole bunch of time. And you don't. You know. You, you make huge assumptions and you let the scientists know. Okay, this is what Antarctic. Look, here's the. Here's an interesting one that I, I keep trying to remind people of, and that is the first picture, the first blue marble shot taken of the earth and i think that was, was very telling uh, in 1972 by apollo 17 you would have thought since it's an american space program you would have taken a picture of north america right because that's the one you put in all the science books all over the world promote america no in fact there was only one continent on that picture that was in its entirety and it was antarctica which was interesting you, the, the, it showed the bottom part of africa and all of antarctica and that was and that was very clever. Whoever came up with that, hope hope they got a gold star and a, and a big pile of money, because you killed two birds with one stone. You said, okay, mm -hmm. here's what the globe looks like, and here's what Antarctica looks like. So there's no doubt. And that was very interesting because that's what you'd want to do. You'd want you'd want to put the image of Antarctica as soon as you could, because up until that point there had been no pictures of Antarctica. That's that mm -hmm. was the first picture of it. In fact, it, and you had people like Bird, you know, coming out and say that there's thousands of miles past Antarctica that uh, yeah. is unexplored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it that should and, be there. That and there. that and of course the 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 killing blow for that his when he was on television for the the Long Jeans Chronoscope in mm -hmm. 1954 when he said that the place was basically made out of money, that it was yeah. there's tons and tons of resources and yet everybody left the ice at the same time like their lives depended on it and the treaty was put into place and, and that was it. How, how does the world's best explorer come on television, say that there's tons of resources there and then just a few years later, they lock them all down permanently from any country in the world and no country has even fought it. You'd think that China, you know, they need resources. You'd think they'd want, they, they'd have a vested interest and they'd want to get in there. They'd protest it. Or Russia, because they were rebuilding from World War II. England, rebuilding from World War II. None of these countries... But you, one thing. It's not that you can't go down there with your company. That that part isn't... The, the, that part bugs me. But what bugs me more is you're not even allowed to talk about going down there and getting the resources. That's the weird part. Because you, we all know that people protest stuff. And lobbyists... There's lobbyists on top of lobbyists. And again, if I was the head of a, a major gas company or a major oil company like Exxon, I would run full page ads in the New York Times starting as soon as he did that article in 1954. And I would run them every year and saying how great it would be for Exxon Mobil to go down there. And you're not even allowed to talk about it. Why not? In fact, nobody's even accidentally, from what I know, run an article saying that, that that our corporation needs to go down there. How does every corporation unilaterally everywhere in the world all agree to the same thing? That Antar not only is it that we're not going to Antarctica, but it's okay that they accept it, that we shouldn't go down to Antarctica. The world is run on greed and money and power. This doesn't well, what, happen. Uh, who was the astronaut that... What do you have a heart attack down there, or oh. got sick, and that was, uh, down there that was that was that was Buzz, wasn't it? Was it or, or no? Yeah, it was Buzz. Yeah, Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, all these people that went down to Antarctica recently. That was I weird. Mean, what, what is all that about? I don't know. They, it started Penguins? out. It started out. The, there was a chain reaction, tw beginning of 2016, and I know this is going to sound like a complete tinfoil hat connection, but I'm I'm going to tell you how it went down. Leonardo DiCaprio goes to, and this is on video. You can go there and watch this. He goes to Pope Pope Francis, is that his name? The mm -hmm. the Pope out in the Vatican, and he goes on and start. He's got a few minutes, fifteen minutes with him. Even a lister Hollywood guy only has fifteen minutes to talk with the Pope, and he wants to talk about climate change. And during this climate change thing, he gives him a book and. 
gives them, which used to be my logo, and in fact it is on several of my things, the Hieronymus Bosch painting. He points it out and he says, back when people thought the earth was flat. And he goes, it symbolizes to me a promise of hope and the future. Why in the world is he talking about flat earth to the Pope? I have no idea, but he's, I'm watching this and going, wow, this is really weird. The Pope then goes down to, I believe, Cuba. This is not secret information. You can go down there and, and check this out. And he meets with the Russian Orthodox Pope, you know, the, the head Russian uh, religious leader down in, down in Cuba. And for the first time, first time these guys, the Pope, any Pope has met with this, this other group in a thousand years, right? Meets with them. We don't know what they talked about. That guy, that Pope, then goes down. I shouldn't call him Pope because I don't know religion that well when it comes to the, the hierarchy. But he goes down to Antarctica. And it's publicized. And he gets pictures taken with a, with a penguin. And he goes into this little church. And he performs some ceremony. And then we don't know what he does in his off hours. And then shortly after that, other prominent figures start going down there. And we don't know why. John Kerry, he goes down there. The, he was there the night of the election. You would think, isn't that crazy? Why is he down there during the night of the election when when Hillary is on the verge of winning, even though she didn't, which was weird in itself? Why is she down? Why is he down there? We don't know. Buzz Aldrin goes down there, and whole, if I screwed this up, I, I think it was Buzz Aldrin, and then he has some sort of heart condition while he's down there. Why is he down there in the first place? Why didn't he go down there earlier? He, he's had plenty of time to be there. He could get catch a free flight any day he wanted to go to Antarctica. But he decides to go when everybody else is going. Obama, did he go when he went down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know that he went to Chile, but did he make a little hop over there? We don't know. I, I think that was the speculation. I don't it know was, if that was uh, Why not? He was like, right it, there at it. It wouldn't surprise me if everybody else has been down there. Why was everybody going down there at the same time? The Antarctica is a weird, strange place that is is the what probably the biggest mystery on the ground that we have and it's sealed off pretty well again you, you, people say well no i can book a trip to antarctica yes you can you, 10 fifteen thousand dollars you can go to antarctica right now you can go down to the peninsula have your you go on a raft to get your picture taken with some penguins you you can do that but you cannot take a helicopter and just start flying anywhere inland you, you can't do it you, they're not they're not going to let you there's Something I believe that Antarctica goes on for a lot farther than than they say it does, and that it finally cum culminates in some sort of barrier, the edge. I don't want to say the end necessarily, the boundary, the outer marker, because everyone keeps seeing seeing the same thing. This the we're taught, you know, when we're young, and that is, well, everyone knows you're going to fall off the edge. Why don't ships fall off the edge? Why don't you fall off the edge? It's like, dude, stop referencing those drawings from. <laughs> <laughs> All those years ago, they don't apply anymore. I mean, everybody's, I shouldn't say everybody, but if, if you haven't watched the 1998 movie, The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, you got to watch it. That puts a lot of this in perspective. And if you don't watch that, watch Dark City. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, Dark. I, that's, that's just exactly what I was thinking, Dark City. Dark City is a great movie. I mean, you don't figure it out till the end. It's not as lighthearted to watch. I mean, it's it's more of a, a darky, uh, I shouldn't say darky, a dark a dark uh, take on on the Truman Show, but that's really what it is. And plus, people say, "What well, if it reminds you of the Matrix?" It should because they use to save money in the first Matrix. They use some of the same sets, literally oh, the same wow. sets from the Matrix. In fact, uh, when he's run, he the 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 one that's the most obvious is the roof scenes when he's running across the roofs. You can intersplice that, and there's videos on this. Trinity running across the same roofs. You know, they use the exact same things. Why not, right? Anyway. Do you think this is this is kind of a, a weird question, but but I've I've been trying to make this connection, and some people have made videos on this connection. Um, I'm not sure there is a connection, but do you think that there is a connection be between what people uh, report? Uh, as being some type of Mandela effect and flat Earth, it could be. Is there any connection there that you see? Well, you know, I've a lot. I've had people come to me over the last year and say that they are connected in some way. Two things. One, 
the the Mandela effect, and the reason why I've never made a Mandela effect video, is that it's so ethereal in nature, meaning it is so hard to prove. You guys don't know what the Mandela effect is. It, it's that something happened in history that you remembered differently. That that something that 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 you that someone will show you something and say, well, I always remembered it as this, and you wouldn't be alone. This this has happened quite a bit. The problem is, is that we don't scientifically anyway, or technology wise, we don't have the ability to record and play back memories like they did in the movie, well, one of the movies would be Brainstorm from 1982 or 83 with Christopher Walken. We don't have the ability yet. So we don't know whatever you say in your head. We just have to take your word for it. It's like, well, no, I remembered the, the Berenstain Bears instead of the Berenstain Bears or when Men Mandela actually died. Or you, you, there's all sorts of fun little things you can remember, or the the Staten Island Ferry, but you don't until unless we have an actual recording of of physical video recording of what's going on in your head, we have nothing to compare it to. It's just your words, and so it's like oh, okay. However, there has been a lot of weird, weird stuff that's been happening, especially over the last three or four months, which I've been I made a video on it because there was a guy from the New Yorker magazine, which is kind of talking about how that he was kind of talking about like the like the matrix is having problems there's glitches in the matrix but i kind of call it something different which is that probability laws are breaking down meaning things that used to be highly unlikely meaning not impossible but highly unlikely meaning vegas odds like a million to one are now happening on a regular basis it, it, big things like the the first one would have been the the Trump election, the fact that everybody knew that even Republicans thought that that Hillary was going to win that night, and yet it wasn't even close. It was it w wasn't like we were waiting for a recall or a tie or anything like where, where like that it came down to one state. He he won before, and and the mainstream media didn't know what to do because all their projections mm. and exit polls said that it was going to there was going to be hillary and you're thinking okay well you know that that's nothing really I'm like, well it is because you're not talking about a politician on the other side you're talking about a reality television star you know he's he's not there's it's the first time in the history of of the american politics that we've elected somebody uh, at that sort of level that has never even been remotely close to being a, a politician i mean yeah jesse jesse ventura was an actor, but he got into you know some politics and he was elected governor. Yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger was an actor, and 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 television, you know. He, but he made it as to, to governor of California. They only can make it so far. Anyway, the then the second thing what, that he mentioned was the Super Bowl, the the United States Super Bowl this year, which was fascinating from a sports standpoint because I watched it from you know from when it turned, which was. No team in the history of the Super Bowl has ever come back from that sort of de deficit to win. You know, the, the the statistics were impossible. They could not come back and win. And nor has there ever been an overtime in the history of the Super Bowl. And both these things happened in the same night. And it wasn't ever in doubt. I was watching the watching the end. I was going, yeah, they're going to win it. You could feel it. It was it was like the, the Atlanta Falcons were just turned off. Like something happened. And, and whatever was controlling the Atlanta Falcons just shut them off. They weren't even playing. It wasn't even the same team on the field anymore. Didn't make any. It didn't make any sense. And then the no. third. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Let me let me kind of go back. Sure. And jump in a little bit too at the same time. Uh, you know this idea of a collective unconscious. Yeah. Uh, this idea of reality relating to the consciousness of the viewer, uh, the whole idea of this socialization where you, you really are, are trying to, quote unquote, brainwash large groups of people to think this particular thought. Yeah. Do you think with things like the freedom of the internet, more independent thinking, uh, I'm going to even throw out like a D-wave quantum computer or whatever, there's something that is affecting directly or indirectly, purposefully, not purposely, this collective unconscious that is 
messing with the fabric of everything, including some of our, well, e- even like, uh, you know, all these changes in the uh, King James Version of the Bible, lion in the wolf, I mean, lamb in the wolf now, the Lord's right, Prayer. Right, 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 right. I mean, just, uh, and, and just particularly picking on that, which you can compare to the other things. And yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was brought up in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, and, you know, we, we memorize many of these verses. I still say the Lord's Prayer every night, and I say it the right way, not the way it's in there now. Right. Which I, is, uh, I say it with the trespasses in there. But it, it, it's almost like 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 we're a piece of wood, and and there's a some kind of bug eating at the at the, the, the or like a termite that goes in and eats the fabric out of the wood. The wood is there, but the uh, the structural integrity integrity of it is being compromised. Right. I believe that this system has to come to a conclusion that we again we are not the first people to rent this apartment and if our civil is i think every civilization gets a certain amount of time to do things and with that this system we were supposed to figure out where we were eventually naturally i think it was supposed to happen maybe but unfortunately because science will protect its own because it's an institution like everything else they you know they're like any corporation a corporation is not going to if they find something that sinks itself, they're not they're going to do everything they can to prevent it, like the oil industry. If the, if somebody came out, we all have heard the stories. If somebody came out with a, with an engine that could run on seawater that would replace oil, that guy is either going to be bought out almost immediately or he's going to be removed. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no way because the oil companies are too big. You you're not going to let the oil companies, the oil company is never going to let that happen. Same thing with the diamond industry. Any company that has a massive monopoly, you're not going to, you're not going to let that happen. So when it came to science, I think that if somebody else in the private sector would have found this and would have gotten out, yeah, it would have eventually gotten out in the, you know, maybe as late as the 1970s uh, and, and that people could have figured out. But what happened was, is that the powers that be found it in the 1950s and they decided to keep it a secret now that being said how long could they keep it a secret how long could they hide it from the world and it looks like well go from the 1950s now and 60 years you you that's about as long as they because the internet detection ability has gotten so good and can be social media and people can compare notes very very quickly it's instantly all over the place and and we can it's a it's a giant research project spread out over all countries and they it's undermining meaning that this thing was never going to be hidden forever it couldn't and they knew this you you can't hide something this big forever it's the pt barnum saying which is you can fool all the people some of the time keyword there being some how long can you hide the world from itself as technology gets better and better as cameras get better as the internet gets better the only thing you can really slow them down with is you can't allow them vehicles to where people can can travel that will replace airplanes like jetsons cars cars from the the television series the jetsons we, we should have had those by now but you can't because the first person gets in it they're going to crank it up and they're going to go as high as they can they're going to oh hey look at that the world isn't isn't nearly what i thought it was going to be and and that was it that's that's the only limit they have everything else though they they've allowed uh, the and the, it's it's come not necessarily come back to haunt them i think they knew i think they they ran the the programs and the algorithms and they figured out eventually that we were going to figure the, the which is why and you and i've talked about this before which is why it's been allowed into the media you if you wanted to hide this thing per, i mean really lock it down tight you don't allow search engines to pop up results with it meaning uh, you know how many how many people have i talked to where they said that flat earth was recommended to them on the youtube sidebar you know when you when you type in any search engine you type the earth is it should never come up flat or if you type in something no matter what conspiracy you look up in you're looking on on youtube if there's a flat earth video out there with any combination earth flat blah blah you know whatever combination there is it should never be recommended to you. And it's the opposite. It's it's being recommended to all sorts of people. In fact, 
the autoplay feature of YouTube has really helped us because people will be watching videos on, on JFK and be doing housework or whatever. And if you're not watching YouTube, you know, it'll just, it'll, it'll just recommend and start playing videos for you. And you, and flat earth just keeps coming up no matter what you're looking for. And it's, it's, again, I think they, they're eventually trying to let this into the system and uh, now how they're going to control it. I don't know. And people say, well, no, if they're going to control it, it's, it's part of a giant psyop. I'm going, Hey, it may be, it may be a psyop, but it's no different than the, the, the movie s scenario where you see the hero where everyone says, no, it's a trap. You're going to walk into a trap. It's like, but but the plot is designed in a certain way where it's like, what? I have no choice. I have to go down that alley. If if the story is going to move forward, the hero has to go de in that direction. And that's what the, kind of the, the community is running into right now, where it's like, we know, Flat Earth knows, the, the community knows full well there's something else behind the scenes, but we have to go forward because what choice do we have? We're not just going to sit in one place. So it's it's been a really interesting journey so far. And uh, I... You know, people keep talking about, oh, it's a, it's a psyop and there's shills everywhere. I don't know if there's actually a shill, and people don't know what shill is, well, uh, an Earth agent. Earth. I don't know if there's an it's agent, if, if there's a single agent in Flat Earth, because there doesn't have to be. The, the storyline is so big that you don't have to have people in it that are steering it in a certain direction, because it steers itself. It, it, Flat Earth is, is such a broad stroke that wherever it's going, it's going to go. And it doesn't matter who's in it and who covers it. It's it's going, it's flowing organically at this point. It's 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 amazing the amount of and again one one last thing, which is it's amazing that mainstream media, which is how you know that there's some control going on here, the big networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, and CNN have not run television stories on it yet. Television stories, internet doesn't count. It, that's because television is still the lowest common denominator. And if it's not on a network television thing, for some people, it doesn't exist. My sister, perfect example. If it's not on Fox News, the story isn't real. <laughs> it's from God, yeah, God to Fox that's, News that's, to her. Well, now, speaking of being on, you're on Truth Frequency Radio uh, every Tuesday night yep. at Eastern Time at 10 o'clock. On your time, I think it's 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Yeah, well, 7, 7, 7 o'clock. And, Eastern. and yep. uh, check him out. Mark also has a uh, wonderful YouTube channel. Uh, and what else do you got going on, Mark? Um, The book, Flat Earth Clues. That's on oh, Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, I didn't book. know about the book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The um the in fact there was a London publisher that called me after the after she watched the clues, and said I'd like to turn it was how, how many people write books without actually writing it, and she said hey uh, how would you like to turn the clues into a book I goes okay what do I have to do she goes send me the transcripts of your clues, and I already had them written down and I just shut them off and did a couple Q and A things and and so there's a book out there it's on Amazon you can look that up. And, and, and the name is Flat Earth Clues. Flat Earth Clues. And, of course, the big thing that I'm going to be hyping up between now and then is there's actually an international conference coming up in November of this year in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wow. I know. Big thing. I'm not even putting it on. It's it's done by Robbie Davidson and Brian Mullen, uh, two other people from the Flat Earth community. And it's really, really cool. I'm, I'm going to be speaking at the – I'm a keynote speaker at the first lunch – and I'll be doing the Flat Earth Video Awards show on the second night. Wow. I know. It's really taken off. I, and this is all within, what, a couple of years? Yeah. Yeah. The Clues, the clues just, just passed their two-year anniversary uh, since I released them on YouTube. And really everything's happened in the last year. It's just, I mean, now it's it's being mentioned. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up to who's, who's bringing it up. In fact, as soon as I hang up with you, uh, Alex Jones released another thing where he was he finally dedicated a show to it he wasn't dead doing the show as some of his co-hosts but i'm going to be well, putting now, that up he's he's not he's still not on board with it is he well he can't he, there's he can't. when you I mean, when you reach the whole nasa thing well the, not not just that but when you reach a certain subscriber base at whether whatever channel it is whether it's youtube or or any subscription service that you're doing you're nervous about this. The, the Alex Jones people contacted me well, over a year ago now. And the 
said the the one guy said he goes, "Can we do a flat Earth show without actually mentioning the words flat Earth?" <laughs> and I, I said, "You won't last long." I go, "You may be able to dance around it for maybe ten minutes, and then eventually you're going to have to to use the term." And it's because it it's so polarizing. There's people. And we, we see this in the comments. People say, I have unsubbed, I have unsubscribed because you're even bringing it up. That's what they're afraid of. They're afraid, Rob Skiba ran in the same thing. Everybody that has over a certain number of subscribers says the same thing. I'm, I'm scared of losing people, losing pe followers, losing listeners. And I understand that. I totally understand that. But you got to get past it because if you go, you're, there's only you can only go against it for so long. If you if you're gonna not do a story on it, then don't do an anti flat Earth thing because then you're just gonna you're gonna run into a, a wall of, of. Speaking of speaking of, of, of that kind of, how, how does Neil deGrasse Tyson address the fact that there's no Mister uh, of pictures of his Mister Potato Head globe model? <laughs> well, you know, to be fair. I know what he was doing, but he really made a mistake. That's going to come back to haunt him when he was speaking to that university group, which was he he should have stopped at oblate spheroid when he when he started that. He goes, it's not really a sphere; it's an oblate spheroid, which is really. You know, and then and then he says, in fact, not only is it that, but it's pear shaped. It's it's heavier on the bottom than it is on the top. And then he had to backtrack on a radio station later and says, well statistically speaking the human being would still see it as a perfectly round like a cue ball a perfectly a perfect sphere and it's like okay then why did you say it was an oblate spheroid and why did you say it was pear shaped are you talking that you know technically by the numbers it's still technic you know you don't you you have to qualify that during the talk when you when you talk to university students and he didn't that's what got him into trouble he didn't he should have followed it up with that statement and he didn't he he should have said it's imper it's imperceivable, imperceivable. You cannot yeah. detect anything but a perfect sphere. If you were if you were a giant being holding the Earth in your hands, you would only see a perfect sphere. He should have put that disclaimer in there, and he didn't. And yeah, that's that haunted him. And and Neil is he's in trouble. He he's. Oh, I, I would love for you to take a couple of weeks and just. Uh just really educate Mike Tyson on the flat earth theories and then have a, have a debate between Neil deGrasse Tyson and Mike Tyson. Now, we could, <laughs> we could, you know, world satellite view from, uh, if there is such a thing. Uh, but, uh, it, 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 Neil, millions it, of people pay pay-per-view. Yeah. I, I don't know. To this day, I still don't know if Neil's in on it or if he's just being told what Wait. to put. What to put. He's, he's got to know. Well, don't you think, think so. People have to know at some level. You'd think so, but at the same time, even the astronauts nowadays don't don't know. The astronauts are, are you know, they sign non-disclosures and they say, you know, they know they're faking something, but I don't think they know why. If you yeah. told them why they were faking zero gravity, I don't, you know, they're, they're not going to know. It's, it's beyond their pay grade. They don't have the clearance for it. And I think, I think that's just because the Apollo astronauts, it went so badly for those guys where the it, it weighed on their conscience so heavily that they didn't know what to do you know they they all crawled into bottles they all became recluses they you know these guys should have been you know high as kites for years and years and years and they weren't they 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 weighed on their souls and i don't i, I think it's like look we got to have these people acting naturally we have to have smiling astronauts people smiling scientists so neil may know in the back of his mind but i don't think anyone's actually shown him the map or shown him the picture yet so I, I, that's, that's my own personal opinion. He may know he may, if he is, then he's a better actor than I thought. I just don't think he's that good. I, I think he's a good actor. Eh, maybe. maybe. Anyway, my friend, it has been wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, go it's... to, uh, get the book. I, I did, I'm going to have to get it. I did yeah. not, uh, I don't know why I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, go on. That's Flat Earth Cruise. You can get on Amazon. Yep. Um, and uh, go to truthfrequencyradio.com. Yep. Listen to Mark every Tuesday night, like I said, 10 o'clock our time. Yep. Uh, you can go to his YouTube channels, and he just has tons and tons and tons of, of videos there. Yep. And uh, more this conference coming up. Uh, conference in November, the International yeah. Conference. We'll probably yeah. talk before then. but it, 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 looks, it looks to me like, uh, I mean, if, if they can get... Uh, as, as some of the stuff they get on uh, 
like the Discovery Channel or whatever, it, it looks like some flat earth could fit in there somewhere. Oh, I absolutely. Know, I know no. the audience is there for Look, it. There's, there is no excuse. There's another statistical thing. There is no excuse why there isn't a flat earth reality show going on right now. There isn't. We have reality shows for everything. There, how, many, how, many show, how many reality shows about people with beards are there? Yeah, now, if yeah, there's, yeah. If there's the a show, reality shows, you know, I shot Bigfoot's grandmama reality show. Exactly. I mean, there should be under. You know, there should be. A, there's probably a, a reality show called Bigfoot while drinking moonshine reality show. Exactly. Right. Women who do underwater basket weaving. That's Discovery Channel number two. Oh well, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. The, why has this not happened? Nobody has done a mainstream. I mean, there's, there's this. This thing writes itself. Absolutely, is the show. So why isn't this happening? The reason is because mainstream's waiting for something, and I don't know what it is. And I mean, you could you could have ships going down to Antarctica. You could be measuring, you know, the 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 flat uh, things in England or whatever, the flat locks or whatever in England. I mean, there's a, there's a ton. You could be sending balloons up for goodness sake. I mean, yep. there's tons of things you could do. Oh yeah, and there'd oh, be an yeah. audience there every week. Yep. For it. Oh, you bet. It's too polarizing not to. And I've, I can, I've already envisioning. You know, it's like, is this the worst show on television, or is it genius? You know, mm -hmm. flat. F people would, yeah. would. Oh yeah. Heck, I'd watch it. Even if I wasn't oh, yeah. flat Earth, I'd watch it. Yeah. I'd even watch it if uh, the Duck Dynasty people were running it. Nice. I'm not, nice. I'm not the Dynasty. biggest fan. My wife loves them, but that's great. Yeah. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Good, Mark. It was so good talking with you, and I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to to talk to us here. And we do appreciate it so much. Happy and, to do it. Uh, like I say, I'm I'm encouraging everybody, and now I, I will actually probably go out and get the book and and be reading little segments from time to time to <laughs> stimulate people's appetite because uh, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a great book. Cool. I'm sure, it's a great book. Well, all right, my friend. You take care. All right. You have a good rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.